In this video, I'll show you how to control the speed and direction of DC motors using analog joysticks and an Arduino. This is a companion video to our Arduino ROV video, but you can use the circuit and code for any project with DC motors. The circuit consists of one breadboard with two joysticks as the controller. Another breadboard, housing an H-bridge for motor control, is connected to the Arduino. The entire system is powered by a lithium battery, and then I have two underwater thrusters because I'm building an ROV, but again, these could be regular DC motors. Each thruster is controlled by one axis of one of the joysticks. So even though these are two axis joysticks, I'm only using one axis from each one. If you wanted to, you could use a single two axis joystick instead and use both outputs to make a vehicle steer forward, backward, left, and right. Let's switch over to Tinkercad, an online Arduino simulator, to talk about the wiring and the code. The first thing you might notice here is that you don't actually see any joysticks because Tinkercad does not have a joystick part. However, a two-axis joystick is really just two potentiometers in the same housing. Since we are only using a single axis for each joystick, I am going to represent them with potentiometers in this circuit. Each potentiometer has three connections. The two outer terminals get connected to power and ground, and the middle terminal, or the wiper, is the analog output that will go to one of the Arduino's analog inputs. If we take a look at a picture of the actual joystick, you will see similar connections, where we have connections for power, ground, and the analog outs from the two directions. Again, the only difference in this case is this is a two-axis joystick, so I'm just leaving one of those unconnected because I'm only using one of the analog outputs from each joystick. So on this separate breadboard that I'm using for the controller, I just have my two potentiometers, which are connected to the power and ground buses on this breadboard, which are in turn connected to the power and ground buses on the main breadboard, which are connected to the five volt and ground pins on the Arduino. You don't want to connect the two power buses together because we'll be using one of those for the voltage from the external battery. We'll talk more about that later. That's it for the controller. Now let's switch over to the main breadboard and look at the L293D H bridge. If you are not familiar with this chip, it allows you to control the speed and direction of two DC motors. So it is very convenient. It just has a lot of wires that you need to carefully connect to the Arduino because this thing has 16 pins. The pins are labeled counterclockwise starting in the top left. So this is pin one, down to pin eight on this side. Here we have pin nine, and then pin 16 in the top right. Conveniently, if you hover over the pins in Tinkercad, it will give you the name or the function of that pin. So we are just going to go in order from pins one through 16 and talk about where I have them connected to the Arduino and what each pin does. Pin one here is the enable pin for outputs one and two, which I have connected to the motor on the right here. This is the pin that you will use to control the motor's speed. If this pin is set high as an Arduino output, that will enable the motor at full speed. If it's set low, the motor will be off or if you use the analog write command, as we will see in the code later, to produce a pulse width modulation or PWM signal, you can use that to vary the motor's speed. So this pin needs to be connected to one of the PWM pins on the Arduino, which have this little squiggly line next to them. I have chosen pin 11 on the Arduino to connect to pin one on the H bridge. Note that you need to be careful to keep track because there are three different numbering systems here and they don't necessarily align. You have the Arduino pin numbers, you have the row numbers on the breadboard, and then you have the pin numbers on the H bridge. So there I have Arduino pin 11 going to row three on the breadboard, which is pin one on the H bridge. So again, those numbers are not necessarily the same. You have to be careful not to get them mixed up. Moving on, we have pin two on the H bridge, which is input number one. This is connected to one of the Arduino's digital pins. I have chosen pin 12. Setting this pin high or low will help control the motor direction, as we'll see in the code later. Next, we have H bridge pin number three, which is output one. That is connected to the positive wire of the right hand motor. Next, we have two ground pins. Pins four and five on this side of the H bridge are connected to ground. You might wonder why you need multiple ground pins. Motors draw a lot of current 
current generates heat, so these also help with heat dissipation and act as a heat sink as opposed to just acting as a single point for electrical ground. After that, we have pin, I lost track, one, two, three, four, five, six on this side, which is output number two, which is connected to the negative wire of this motor. We then have pin number seven, which is input two on the H-bridge, connected to another digital pin on the Arduino. I have that connected to pin nine. So now let's back up and look at this side so far. How this works is that these two inputs to the H-bridge control whether the corresponding output is on or off. So for example, if I set this pin high using the Arduino, then this pin will switch on and send a high voltage to the motor. If I do that while I have this pin set low, then this pin will have a low voltage and I will have a voltage or potential difference across my two motor leads. If I reverse those, if I set this pin high while I set this input pin low, then this output pin will be low, this output pin will be high, so I will have switched the direction of the voltage or potential drop across the motor, and that will make my motor spin the other way. So that, in conjunction with this enable pin, is what allows me to control both the speed and the direction of the motor. These two pins control the direction, and this pin controls the speed. And you might ask, well, wait, what happens if you set both of the inputs high or low at the same time? And then the motor just won't spin because you will have no potential drop across it because both of the outputs will be at the same voltage. So you won't break anything, but in order for the motor to spin, you need to have one of the inputs high and one of the inputs low. Moving on, we have pin number eight, which is labeled as power two here in Tinkercad. That is the power for the motors. That is going to come from your external battery because the Arduino, even from the five volt supply, generally cannot provide enough current to drive motors. Motors can require several hundred milliamps and you really want an external battery to provide that and not get it directly from your Arduino. So I mentioned earlier, isolating the two power buses on the breadboard. So you can see I have the two ground buses connected. I have a jumper wire connecting the ground bus on the left side to the ground bus on the right side, but the power buses are isolated because this bus is connected to five volts in the Arduino this bus is connected to nine volts from my nine volt battery and i have a switch in series with the battery so i can turn power to the whole circuit on and off you want to be careful not to short circuit nine volts to five volts because that can damage components in your circuit or damage your arduino i am also powering the arduino from that nine volts through the v in pin instead of through the barrel jack there are different ways to power your arduino projects but this is one option where you can wire an external battery directly to a bus and then power the Arduino through the VN pin instead of using the barrel jack. Moving over to the right hand side of the H bridge, we have more or less the same thing for this motor. So down here at pin nine, we have the enable pin, which is going to control the motor speed. I have that connected to Arduino pin 10. Next, we have the first input pin, which I have connected to Arduino pin eight. Then we have the first output, which I have connected to the motor's positive wire. We have the two ground pins. Then we have the next output connected to the motor's negative wire. The next input, which is connected to Arduino pin seven. And then finally the other voltage, and this is the logic level voltage, which I have connected to five volts from the Arduino. Do not connect that to a higher voltage from your external battery, or you could damage the chip. That's it for the H-Bridge. Again, these can seem pretty complicated or intimidating. If you've never used one before, 16 pins is a lot to connect, so you want to very carefully and systematically go through and make sure you don't have any of your wires mixed up before you connect power to your circuit and before you try uploading any code to your Arduino. So next, we are going to switch over and take a look at the code to see how we can use these two potentiometers, which again are representing joysticks, to control the speed and direction of these two motors. First, I define a whole bunch of constant variables for all the different pins I am using. For example, Joy L pin and Joy R pin are the two analog inputs for the joysticks. And then I have pins for forward, backward, and enable for each of the two motors. I then have non-constant variables or the ones that can change, such as Joy L and Joy R for the analog readings from the analog inputs for the two joysticks. Also a neutral 
variable for each joystick, which we are going to use to measure or calibrate the neutral position when the program starts. In other words, where the motor should have zero speed because the joystick is in the middle. We are going to add a bit of a dead zone around that neutral position, so your joystick does not have to be perfectly centered in order for the motor to stop. This helps you avoid drift if the joystick is off by just a little bit. Your motor would be very slowly spinning in one direction and it would be very hard to get it to stop exactly. So this dead zone, again, makes it so your joystick doesn't have to be perfectly centered. We also have variables for the speed of each motor. In the setup function, we set all of our motor control pins as outputs, which technically you don't need to use the pin mode command with analog write. So if you were only going to turn the motors on and off full speed with digital write, you would need this. But again, if you're going to use analog write to control motor speed, you don't actually need these two lines. And then we perform that joystick calibration where I am assuming the joystick is centered right when the program starts. So I'm going to read the analog input from both joysticks and save that in the neutral variable. I also initialize serial communication, which is useful for printing out variables and debugging later. Inside the loop function, we use the analog read function to get the analog value from each of those joysticks coming into the analog pins. This is going to return a value between 0 and 1023 using the Arduino's 10-bit analog input. Our goal is then to convert that to two things a speed for the motor, which has to be a value between 0 and 255, because analog write is only 8-bit, and a direction for the motor. So we can control the motor's speed, but we also want to control whether it is spinning forward or back, or clockwise or counterclockwise, whatever you want to call it. We do that using an if-else statement that subtracts the neutral value that we calibrated earlier from the current joystick value and compares that to the dead zone variable that we set. We have three different possibilities. If the joystick is pushed forward, then we want to spin the motor forward and set the speed. If the joystick is pushed backward, we want to spin the motor backward and set the speed. Or if the joystick is in that middle dead zone, we just want to turn everything off and stop the motor. So we're using the digital right command to set the direction control pins high or low. Remember, these are those yellow wires that we saw when we looked at the circuit earlier that determine the direction of the motor. And then we are using the map function to convert those analog read values, which again are 10 bits, so it can be between 0 and 1023, to a 0 to 255 range that we will use with analog write. We then go ahead, all that entire if statement was just for the left motor. We do the same thing for the right motor to set the direction of the right motor. And then when all is said and done, use the analog write command to set the speed of each motor. And we have then reached the end of our loop. So we go back up to the top of the loop, read the joysticks again to see if the value has changed, and repeat that whole process. If we close out the code and run the simulation, we can see how this works in practice. So I'm going to start the simulation. The code will immediately grab the current position of the potentiometers or joysticks and save that as the neutral value. And since I haven't touched these yet, they are centered and neither motor is spinning. But for example, if I rotate this potentiometer in that direction, you see the left motor starts spinning one way, as indicated by the negative RPM value here. And the farther I spin the potentiometer, the faster it spins. If I go back to near that middle position, and you see I don't have to be perfect, I have a little bit of wiggle room, but not much, then the motor will stop. And if I spin it the other way, the motor will speed up in the opposite direction. So now I have a positive RPM. And if I go all the way, that's my maximum possible speed in that direction. And if I go back to the middle, the motor will stop. And then I see the same thing for the right motor with the right potentiometer or joystick. Spin it one way, and I get a negative RPM. Spin the potentiometer the other way, and I get a positive RPM. The motivation for this particular circuit was steering an ROV that has two propellers. So each propeller is controlled by one joystick. They are controlled independently, so I can easily make the vehicle steer forward, backward, or turn left and right. But again, you could use this for any other project with motors. If you'd like instructions to build this ROV, or if you're looking for another cool Arduino project, check out the links in the description of this video. For many other projects in all areas of science and engineering, visit our website, www.sciencebuddies.org.